Okay. So what made you decide to come to this, uh, whatever it is today, meeting with Congressman Murphy? I'm interested to meet him. I want to hear personally what he has to say to us. Uh, are, are you a constituent of his? No, I did not help vote him in office. I did not rally for him, but he is my congressman. Okay, so so you do live in this district. It, it, yes, thank you, thank you. Not that I voted for him. Right, I, I didn't mean did you vote for him, but, but I wanted to make sure you yes. weren't from outside the district or something no, no, like no, that. No, no, uh, no. Have you ever come to see the congressman uh, at any of his other events? No. No? No. Uh, uh, are you uh, upset about the health care thing that everybody else seems to be upset about? Yes, I am upset. Okay, uh, uh, may I ask, uh, uh, what's causing you to be so upset about it? I have questions about how much government I want um, to be around me. They are currently supposed to be in charge of Social Security, the postal care system, and what other branch? I can't remember. I'm from California, so I know that... Okay, they're, they're in charge of lots of things. They're in charge of lots of things. <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, uh, let me just ask, uh, have you read any of the bill at all? Yes. D do you think Congressman Murphy has read the, any of the bill at all? I hope so. Okay. Do you think I'm here because I hope so. D do you think he's read the whole bill, start to finish, every page, every word? I will hope yes. Okay. All right. Thanks a lot for your time. Thank Bye. you. So what made you decide to come down here to see the congressman today? I, I came down as a Christian saying that we, uh, we are called on in the gospel to take care of each other and not blow each other up, that if we got out of Iraq and Afghanistan, we'd have plenty of money to take care of each other. Um, if we made Halliburton pay their fair share in taxes, 75% of their subsidiaries are incorporated outside of the United States. They have these non-compete government contracts that are worth billions and billions of dollars. They're draining the treasury and they're not paying anything back in. There is money out there to pay for this. It depends on who you're going to hold accountable and who your real constituents are. Okay. okay. Uh, are you a constituent of Congressman Murphy? I am indeed. I uh, helped get him elected, and I'm uh, here to hold his feet to the fire and say, deliver on the campaign promises, and as a Christian to be here to say, we need to be taking care of each other, not blowing each other up. Okay. Uh, let me ask, uh, ha have you read the, the bill, H.R. 32? That's uh, I have not read the whole thing. I've only gotten um, what I've gotten out of the newspapers and on television, which, you know, you get more news about Michael Jackson's kids than you do about what's in the bill. Uh, based on what you've read, would you say that you support what you've read so far or you don't support it? No, I really don't support it. I'm for a single-payer option that takes care of people. I'm not supporting this. And there's so, What is this business of a level playing field with health insurance companies? We're not talking about buying TVs and radios here. We're talking about the quality of people's lives. And if we can put something out there that puts the uh, private insurance companies out of business, that's that's capitalism. So what? Uh -huh. You know, let's, let's make it work for the people for a change. Let me ask you one more question. Sure. Do, do you think Congressman Murphy has read H.R. 3200 every page, every word, start to finish? You know, I don't know, but I'm very nervous about the words level playing field. What the hell is that all about? That's, you know, we, we don't need a level playing field when it comes to health insurance. We need to take care of people. That's the issue. Okay, thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Uh, what made you decide to come down here today to see Congressman Murphy? Well, I wanted to hear what his stand would be, especially on uh, health care, but also on uh, the continuation of adding troops into Afghanistan. Uh-huh. Yeah, well, health care seems to be the hot issue. Uh, are you in, so. in favor or uh, opposed to H.R. Uh, 3200 is the bill being debated, I guess, in the House right now? Uh, I'm in favor of the, whatever bill will provide a public uh, uh, aspect to the health care debate. Uh, we really have a desperate situation in this country, and Without a public uh, option, I think it's going to get more desperate. Uh, okay. H have you read the bill, a H.R. 3200, that's out there right now? I have not read the complete bill, no. Okay. Do you think Congressman Murphy has read the whole bill, every page, every word? I don't know if he has or not. Uh, maybe we could ask him today. Y you think it's a good idea for members of Congress to read bills before they vote for them? I think it's a good idea for they or their staff to analyze them, yes. Okay. Well, well just uh, uh, Congressman Rangel uh, made some comments. I don't know if you heard about them saying, said, I, I, oh, I love these members who tell you read the bills, you know. What good does it do to read the bill if you can't understand it? So that's why I was wondering. Well, that was Congressman Rangel, I believe. Uh, uh, right. Uh, but, well, I was just wondering about the other members of Congress, uh, and I was wondering. You know, I don't know. Uh, let's but, ask, uh, let's uh, ask him today. Okay. Why don't you ask him that question? Uh, Thank, okay. th thanks for your time. Thank I appreciate you. it. Uh, what made you decide to come down here to see Congressman Murphy today? 
Um, well, I totally wanted to let him know that we are opposed to any kind of nationalized health care system. It's unconstitutional and it is really a danger to uh, American health care. Uh -huh. uh, now, well, most of the people here today seem to be carrying signs in favor of the uh, health care option. I would disagree with that. There are a number of people here who have uh, signs that are against the health care uh, option. They're right, not they're, holding them up in people's they're, faces. Right. They're, I they're was going to say there, there are some, but uh, just it, it seemed to me that more of them and this surprised they're me. Not as, they're not as vocal and they're not yelling at people and while the congressman is speaking, they're, uh -huh. being, they're politely listening uh -huh. and they're allowing other people to speak. But there are a number of people who here who are against the health care plan. Mm -hmm. This seems to be one of the uh, tamer town hall meetings, all the things I've seen you know, on the news and the internet. Uh, I mean, uh, are you surprised? Did you expect it to be a little more uh, contentious? Or? I haven't been to the other one, so I can't really speak to that. Uh -huh. Uh, uh, now, you're uh, opposed to H.R. 3200, the bill that's being yes, in the House. Mm -hmm. uh, are there specific parts in it that you uh, object to? Uh, there are a tremendous number of parts that I object to. Overall, I object to the concept of a nationalized health care plan because it's unconstitutional. If you look at the Tenth Amendment, it is just not okay for the federal government to come in and take over anything that it doesn't have authority to do so. If, if Missouri, if Ohio, if one of the states does not want to participate, the federal government does not have the authority constitutionally to make it participate, number one. Okay? There's a number of things inside of that bill that are just wrong. I'm really concerned that all these unions are being really uh, misused. They're being tricked into thinking that they're going to benefit from this. If you think about it, well, first of all, inside of the bill, what it says is that after this bill is signed, there will be no more um, contracts that will be legal for people to have with an insurance company. No more new ones. Anything that you've had, you can keep, but you can't keep any new ones. So at your next contract negotiation with your company, any changes in co-pays, any changes in provisions in that contract constitutes a new contract. So you will lose your union contract health care. It's gone. You will be forced into the public option. And the union members don't realize that. Okay. Uh, are you going to get in line and ask Congressman Murphy a question? Um, I haven't decided yet. My husband's okay. up there. It, it is a pretty long line. <laughs> yes, anyway, thanks for talking to us. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, what was it you wanted to say? Uh, uh, there was a point that had been missed today. That... Right. In regards to the health care of the government taking over, I think a great example is what happened in New York this week. All health workers are mandated to get a flu shot. Whether they want to or not, they have to get it. If they don't get it, they lose their job. That's government health care. Uh, are you a health care worker? No, I'm not. But I'm listening to this on the radio thinking, you know, why, why are these people being told that they have to take a shot? Which, by the way, does not guarantee that they won't get the flu. And in the 1970s, we saw that a number of people developed Gillian Barre as a result of the flu shot. I remember those shots in the right. 70s. So why this is a small example of what a larger thing that can happen is that that's not choice. You're being told you do this or you lose your job. If you were mandated uh, by your employer to get a shot, would you do it? If they told you to lose your job? Absolutely not. I'd get a lawyer and say, you know what, you're breaking my constitutional rights. Let's fight this. And the Nurses Association in New York State is fighting it. They disagree with it. If you were mandated by the federal government, then you said everyone in uh, certain professions or I'd say no. Get it. I'd say, say no. No, because I know that there's a much greater risk for me in particular to get that flu shot, the illness that I could develop. So, no, and they cannot mandate it. If I go to work sick, it's up to my employer to say, go home, take the week off, you know, take sick pay or even lose out on those few days. But you can't tell me that I have to take a shot that might possibly prevent an illness, but also might cause a very serious illness. That's government. Okay. Uh, outside of that, would you say you're generally in favor of HR 3200? Uh, I'm opposed. I'm really concerned about uh, you know like they he used he was playing with semantics. He said there's no such thing as a death penalty, but in fact there was a clause in there that said that you will have end of life counseling every five years. If you have an illness, that will occur more. And that's going to be, well, do you really think you need to get the cancer treatment? Do you really think you need to have this surgery? And that's really about cost. And if you uh, pay attention, Ezekiel Emanuel is one of the individuals who is a primary guide in this whole process. He is 
one who is offering advice to President Obama, he has a scale about quality of life, and it's if you're 15 to 45, you're good. If you are under 15, you're not a productive citizen. His words, not mine. If you are over 45, you have had your chance to be a productive citizen. You fall out of scale, you're not going to get the treatment if we don't have it. But that's just the reality. All right, so, thanks yeah. for talking to us. All right, appreciate thank you. Hearing.